We're gonna begin the process of trying to fix this dent as best we can, not being body guys. Maybe trying to push it from the inside out, trying to pull on it, maybe with some glue tabs. I don't know yet, I'm just trying to assess, you know, best course of action tonight. Um, I did start taking apart the interior, got the uh, back seat out. It's a pretty narrowly dent. Um, <clears throat> Cause with the door closed, get down close, you can really see how wide that gap is here. So this whole panel needs to come up. Actually the paint flex enough to where the paint cracked here. Um, I don't know what kind of access we can have back here. The only thing I can see from the inside is where the seat belt um, mounts up right here. That's gonna be, I think, our only solid point of access behind this. So I think that's first. First things first is to get that seat belt out and see what we can do from the back side. So that did a pretty good job of popping it out um, up in here. But we need to get shove it over in this corner. Um, see if we can get some of this stuff out and see if we can get down here. But there's foam down here kind of blocking us off. And we got a pretty nice crinkle here. So we need to try to get over in this section here. I do have a, a football, a youth football gonna try to get this as small as we can and maybe up up and down and jam it in that archway kind of over here see what you do all right so you can see actually probably better from underneath here how much that quarter is wrinkled right there at the bottom um, so plans once we get the uh, dent puller is to you know, obviously weld it right in here and start pulling this out and then you know up here this I think is okay I think when we start pulling down here and up here we're basically gonna be pulling this back some to open up this door gap, see how close it's right here and how open it is down here. So as we pull this out, it's gonna open this, close this this way. Um, same thing as we pull this down here, but we need the uh, the stud welder to do all this, so. All right guys, so this is where we're at on Mustang. Still smashed, but we got this. Little spot welder, put a magnetic ground on it and everything else is kind of how it comes i just stuck it on my welding cart makes it a little easier to get around because it's heavy af um and we're going to grind off that spray paint that i put on there the other day and start spot welding and see if we can't pull this shenanigans out so i guess there's nothing to it but to do it
<clears throat> so this is kind of the setup. Uh, this is our last pull of the day, mainly because it's uh, getting dark. But <clears throat> we got a majority of the major stuff out. I and mean, we still got to get in here. There's some damage underneath. Um, and obviously we still got a bunch of waves and stuff in here. But that big old kink used to be right here. Still got a little bit there. Um, and obviously a bunch of little, you know, got a dent over here to work out. You know, we still got a, a lot of straightening to do, but the main big ass dent is out. Now we got a bunch of little dents to deal with. Um, so, but this is, I mean, that little machine, it worked pretty good. I mean, for 250 bucks. I think you can do a little review on it like you did for the Weld Pro. Yeah, I probably will. Um, yeah. 250 bucks. Works way better than a $100 one. I think it's hard to free. Yeah, it's definitely a different setup than that. Like, you know, it's to me so far been worth 250 bucks all day. It's really easy to set up. It's kind of, you know, it's pretty intuitive. Um, once you kind of get it figured out, it's easy. But we just strapped to the truck and a ratchet strap. Started pulling on it. Drew had a um, football on the inside, getting some outward pressure that way to uh, kind of help us along. And it did all right. So we'll continue this, but this was our setup to pull the, the major dent out. And we just did this a bunch of different times, different spots. I mean, you can see all the little uh, little weld marks. I'll have to go back and uh, <clears throat> hit those up a little bit and then grind them flat once we get everything kind of worked in. But we will continue on probably throughout the week. So we'll catch you then. So. <clears throat> as you can see we're deep in it um but what i found was that we're struggling pulling this guy because of this inner skin you can see it's all kinked in so what we need to do is try to because down here it's real bad and it's still got the spot welds and everything in so we need to try to get this to want to get back in as you can see that ball in there popping everything out separated this part of the skin from the outer part of the skin which is not a huge deal um in the grand scheme of things um you know we'll seal it back up with seam sealer and all that good stuff but <clears throat> down here it's not allowing us to release this tension which is keeping this section of the quarter pulled way in so we get a hammer in here, try to get this somewhat straightened back out. And then, um, you know, hopefully that'll, like I said, relieve some tension on this lower part of the quarter and allow us to get it pulled back out. All right. <clears throat> so we got that, I think, pretty close to where it would be. Obviously, it ain't going to be perfect anymore, but um enough to where we could you know once we get everything kind of straightened back out a little bit better we can tack it in the spot and then seam seal it um i mean you can still see here we're still in it's not following the like the original arc so we're either too far out or this is still in I think it's maybe a little bit of both. We've kind of over pulled it a little bit here. Um, but it is definitely still squished in right there. Because this thing still kind of turns in on itself down here. So I'm going to leave the arch alone for a little bit. And then, like I said, I'm going to come back down here. See if we can't get on this body line again and try to get get this body line pulled out some. So, and I think that'll be a good stopping point for tonight. Um, but she's coming back around. Um, I know you're not gonna be able to see too, too much, but the uh, door panel gap's getting pretty close again um, to where she was before. So that's good news. 
got a wild man here. That's whiskey. He's crazy. But on the car, I think we got the majority of the major stuff pulled out. And we still got a little high spot here, which we need to get in. And, you know, some lows and stuff like that. But for the most part, we're back in shape. Now we've just got this thing taped up here. What's up, whisk? What's up, whisk? Um, but you see when it's clipped in, don't, don't, don't hit my stuff. It's going to be relatively plush. Um, and that little inconsistency, we're going to fill that with filler. And it won't be perfect, I doubt. But it'll be better than smashed in. we got a little bit of oil canning we'll have to take care of. Um, but we're still nice and firm up here and in here. But this is where it took the most hit. It was right in this general area there. Got some little, some little high spots where we had to pull pretty hard. So we're going to get in there and tap those down. Um, and also this thing, get in here. You can see where the puller actually left some pinholes. So we're going to come in here and weld those up. Uh, seal this panel back up. There's a bunch of them underneath here, which we'll have to take care of. But that is where we stand at the moment, guys. So um, this video is not too long yet. Um, probably we'll go through and get the filler at least on here um, in this video. And then, then, you know, probably do paint and stuff in the next video um, <clears throat> that's the plan so for now I don't know I'm gonna start welding up holes I may try to get the metal straight um, ish and then go back and weld you know I'm, I'm new to this I don't do this all the time so I don't really know the best process but I, I'm thinking try to get the metal as straight as we can and then come back and weld up the holes and then do one last final check on just the bare metal and then go from there if we need to make any last adjustments. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. You know, like I said, I'm not a body guy, but I'm doing my best. So you might be able to hear me some. <clears throat> what we did here is we sprayed ourselves a guide coat. Um, and obviously the guide coat shows us our lows and our highs. So like when you saw this, all this one just piece of metal, obviously it all looks pretty good. But obviously now we know we have some lows to pull out in here, down here. You know, this needs to come out some. The body line is there, but... We need to work it back up a little bit. Um, we're low up in here. So we've got some work to do. Now this is gonna be low, because this is uh, where the door closes. Let me see, let me show you. Ugh.
<clears throat> it's probably a little too low at this point, but it's not too, too bad. This is where the door, you know, basically this line here follows down into here. So it's kind of like in there. So this has got to come out just a little bit. Um, but we're getting close. I don't want to pull it too much because I can, can use the body filler to kind of make up the difference. Um, if you, if you over pull it, you know, then you'll sand back through the body filler into the, um, bare metal and have to do it again. So we've got a high spot here and then this is all still kind of low. Um, this is probably about the right here. So we need to pull this out just a little bit. So we're just going to get our, our puller. I tried to use hammer and dolly. I'm not the best at it. It probably takes a lot of uh, time and, and um, practice. So I'm just going to get in here with the, the spot welder and just, just bump these out and kind of tap down around it as we go. Um, obviously these where we pulled a little bit pretty hard with the, um, the ratchet strap and stuff, we'll need to kind of knock those guys back down. Okay, so unfortunately I didn't realize my phone was dying when I was filming this and it died while I was doing this. So as I was trying to sand and block this guide coat and then kind of figure out where we were, this panel kept flexing in and out. Like I showed you, I had that oil canning. So what I had to do was what they call sh shrink it. So I took my propane torch here. Technically you're supposed to use a, um, like an oxy uh, acetylene torch, but I don't have one of those. So uh, you know, we do what you can. Um, and it was real bad right here in the center. Um, you remember I could push this whole panel, it would flop in and out. Uh, so I heated it up right here till it got, you know, nice little orange spot right here. And then I dinked it a couple of times with a hammer and that solid, you know, made that pretty solid in here. Um, <clears throat> but when I pushed over here, it still, still has a little bit of it. I may have to do it again. Um, but I also think too, that's because the backing metal isn't attached anymore, but so we'll probably have to do it again. Um, because you can see right in here, it's still a little bit of a oil canning effect, but it's much better than it was. All right, I'm going to see if I can do this one handed. Probably shouldn't be considering, uh, I already don't know what the hell I'm doing. Once you get that middle orange, come in here, don't get with a hammer, and then cool it down. Let me turn this off before I burn myself to death. Um, so let's see. Right here. This is, oh, yeah, that's good. Right in here, still, still got a little bit of boom, 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 that nonsense going on. Okay, so last time we got this panel pretty, pretty straight. Now we still got a little bit of. Where's it at? Right in here? Right here. Some oil canning as they call it. But before we tackle that, we'll take a break from beating on stuff. And you can see in here where all this stuff kind of went through. Now that kind of carries on all under here. There's little holes and pits and stuff like that from welding and stuff. Or not welding, but pulling. Um, and just pulling too hard. So. What I want to do, and also you can see, it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but you can see this inner skin is about where the inner skin needs to be. You need to squeeze it like this and then tack weld 
this back on as you can see right here where this kind of flares out just a touch um, it's because it's not attached it's not rolled underneath this inner structure anymore so I don't have the tools or really the know how to do that but I can tack weld it all back down and that should help pull this outer in a little bit so that's what we're gonna do so we'll start with today is just welding up all the holes and welding this inner skin together. So we got the wheel off so we can really get in there and see what's happening. And uh, we'll set up the MIG on super low so we don't blow through this stuff and uh, get going. Alrighty, everyone. So, as far as my limited skill set goes, I'm going to say that <clears throat> the metal work's done. Um, it ain't perfect, that's for sure. Got like a little wrinkle down here, and, you know, we'll try to fill most of this stuff. Well, I've got a couple little spots to knock down right here, little one right there. Um... But from what I can tell, I think we're okay. Um, <clears throat> this was a giant pain and it's ugly, but everything's so thin, I'm afraid to grind on it. Cause when you grind on it, you go right back through and that's a pain in the butt. But I hope you guys will be able to see other than the, let's see, can I get you guys in there? Other than the main holes where the side skirt clips in, I don't see any light. And therefore that means we're pretty much uh, sealed up as far as the metal goes. So we won't be getting any water and stuff in there to rust. Not that you know this thing really matters too much, but we did have to create a little low spot here where we fix the oil canning. It's a little loose, but the other side is l pretty loose too. And it has that, well, I guess you guys didn't see it. But there's a plastic brace that goes like right in here. Um, it kind of, you know, tensions everything up in here, which the other side has, this side doesn't. And it's pretty close, you know, in the realm of government work. I think we're okay. All right, guys. <clears throat> so this is about as good as my amateur skills are going to be able to get this stuff. I think it's pretty good. Obviously, not close to perfect at all, but I think we'll be able to get it looking pretty good again. Um, it's a far cry better than it was before, but from like the edge of the door. I mean, it's pretty dang close all the way down right here is a a touch low but like i said we can use some filler fill that in and uh you know as long as it's 90 95 percent of what it should be and that's all i can ask for for my first time doing this stuff um <clears throat> so i think it's going to come out okay we're definitely going to have to build up this body line again because we lose it right about here. I mean, it's still a little bit there, but it's pretty much gone by then. Um, so I we'll have to build that back up with some filler. I've got it all sanded out way out to here where we didn't need to, but I plan on coming up to right in this area. Then we'll block it all down. We'll come up to, you know, right up in here. Um, so I just got to clean this up. You can see my hands getting dirty, rubbing on it. <clears throat> so. Got to clean it and I'll wax and grease remover, everything around it. And then we'll wipe it on here and sand this guy down and start blocking.
So, uh, note to self, less is more. I mixed up way too much of this stuff um, to successfully handle it. Um, probably could have done about half as much or thereabouts. So, uh, you know, it, it's on there. All right, so we're starting to block this thing out. And we got a high spot right here. Get this mask off so you can hear me. So, it's a high spot right in here. Like when you run your hand this way, it feels got a little bit of a bump right here. And then it kind of smooths out after that. Either that or this is still pretty low. It's hard to say though, because it feels good this way. But right here, it's like a little high. So you're probably gonna get a dolly behind here and just tap this down a little bit. See if I can get it more in line with the rest of this. Cause it's this, these feel good, this feels high. So try to do that, we still got a long way to go. Still blocking out down here. So we're definitely gonna have to do another coat of filler um, just because I'm terrible at this stuff. But um, getting there. This is the state of affairs. Just a giant pile of dust. And this is coat number two of filler. Um, <clears throat> I'm feeling like up here is good. Right in here, a little bit of a low spot. Up here, pretty good. Low right in here. Uh, down here, feeling decent right um and then we're low and see how low we are in here um i tried to put a late night coat of filler on don't do that just wait till the morning and it only takes 15 minutes so we're still you can kind of see the body line where it's low right in here a little bit of a high and then this is all just low from here up is low so we can put a you can see here we've got a little spot right here other than that, like I said, we've got probably at least one more coat. I'm hoping one more coat of filler, um, especially on this trailing edge where the body line is. Um, and then I'm hoping to just do a skim coat of the of the putty, this stuff right here, um, to kind of fill any little minor imperfections in, block that down with 180. That's the hope anyway. So got to keep going. Catch you guys up in a little bit. skim coat hopefully that uh, comes out all right and it started kicking off on me down here so I'm gonna have to sand that off probably throw some on there um, I think we'll be all right on that we're gonna find out for sure um, we end up having to just sand probably what I'll do is sand this down a little bit and then throw a skim coat on here I don't know we'll see First things first, get this sanded straightish and put a skim coat right down there and then block this out. Uh, it is, temperature's falling in here. It's now 68 degrees. Um, yeah, as always, every time I'm doing this, it um, the temperature is, is dr dropping overnight. So I try to try to get this thing primed um, tonight before the temp gets super low. As long as we can do it, oh, by the time it gets to be about 60 degrees in here, it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes for the primer to dry, we should be okay. So we gotta get a move on and get this uh, skim coat blocked and 
close to where we need it and then prime it and then we can block it all block the primer later um, that's a goal we got to get on it <clears throat> okay so here's where we stand this is uh, one coat of primer so hear me out misread the directions thought it said 80 grit sand scratches 180 grit so had to sand it all down again um, body line it's it's not perfect but it's okay we'll we'll make do um, got to remember this is after all a drift car and this is my first time doing this and I've spent too long on it already so we did our first coat of primer thought like man going good it's uh you know 11 o'clock I'm gonna be in bed chilling by midnight no you could see all the sand scratches so we went ahead we re-blocked it down with 180 grit um, you can see we still had some build on the primer so we're gonna hit it with two coats and then that's gonna be it it's gonna just this is what it is um, I'm done so let's hit it with two coats and we'll see what it looks like She ain't perfect, um, but it's a damn sight better than it was before. Um, we still got lots of things to do, so I got to fix that side skirt. Um, obviously, we got to get this thing clean and then ready for uh, the actual paint. <clears throat> but the body works, you know, from for what I can do, it's done. Um, it was a ton of work. Uh, next time this happens, this thing's getting over fenders. So <clears throat> we'll try not to get hit anytime soon. This was the second event. Um, we're still gonna run tandems and so shit happens. But um, that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. You enjoyed it. Um, dude, this took a long time. It does. It's not gonna seem like it in the, in the video because I didn't film a bunch, especially the last two days, just because I was trying to get it done before this uh, cold snap comes. It's going to be like 28 degrees or something tomorrow, tonight. I don't know. But we made it. It is 68 degrees. It's 12.50 or whatever it is on a Monday night. I got to go to bed. This thing is as good as it's going to get. And, you know, to be honest, it ain't half bad. You know, like I said, that body line ain't exactly straight. But, you know, for the girls we date and what this thing's going to do, it's, uh, it's going to be just fine. 
That's the plan, saying I'm babbling. It's late. I'm going to bed. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all the stuff. You know what to do. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.